Hi friends, welcome to Aishu's DIY. Today we will design with Sam's bead box subscription for the month of December. I pulled out a lot of beads. I know it's like a whole lot of things. These all came in the box, nothing from my stash except for these spacer beads. I have pulled out some of these spacer beads. One is like very teeny tiny, but it has like nice dimension to it, which I really like. The other one is like this flower okay and then some daisy spaces in anti-copper so the color combination i'm going for is bronze and copper because i pulled out these beads in bronze and these ones in copper as well so the copper adds a nice touch to it i didn't have anything any spacer in this bright copper but i have it these daisy spaces in anti -co anti copper i want to mix it because what I thought was when I used all bronze, it didn't look that cool. Because of this uh, gemstone faceted bead, it's so pretty. I have no idea how to express these, uh, the beauty of these beads. They glitter a lot and I really like it a lot. So these beads, if I put a bronze spacer or bronze bead cap on top, just kind of blends with it. It doesn't take out the color so i'm going to use some anti-copper and bronze in this uh, whole um, necklace it's a big lariat necklace that i'm having in mind to make it for that we need eslon uh, knotting cord um, and it's going to be a lariat and i'm going to have some drops as well so i picked up um um some head pins this one is one size and i picked up the bigger ones as well all bronze head pins i didn't have that much copper and i decided anyways there is bronze here too right so this one is two inch head pin okay and this one is a one and a quarter inch head pin Okay, I have two head pins. You can use any any head pins that you have available as long as you are able to wire, um, uh, wrap it. Uh, as long as you are make able to make a wrapped loop rather than a simple loop. I'm going for a wrapped loop um, uh, because um, that is what will be very secure in this project because I'm going to add it to the cord. So I have here some Eslon as you can see and I have pulled out all of these beads in blue and a little bit of these ones left over from my project. Um, I already must have uploaded uh, the earrings with these uh, beads. So, so I have only a little bit left over so I pulled out those two and these gorgeous beads also. See I have actually put it on a head pin bronze head pin and then i have this beautiful uh, bronze bead cap that i put it on top and then um i'm going to do a wire wrapped a wrap loop so all of all all these these are 10 millimeter uh, faceted truck beads i'm using that as well i made some dangles already as you can see with these two things these beads and this one right here so those are my dangles. I'll tell you guys how I made this. And also I'm going to make a dangle of this and this. Okay. So uh, tools wise we need our regular tools. Round nose pliers. Uh, tweezer nose pliers. Wire cutters. And if you want you can also have the nylon jaw pliers if you want to straighten it. So you keep the round nose pliers on top okay and just bend it on top of your pliers now reposition your pliers and keep it that way i'm not making a big loop that's why it's pretty pretty close to the end and you have a question mark now hold it there and it's a little bit tough because it's a thicker gauge okay Oh, you have that loop so now what you do is take your flat nose pliers and you can hold that loop and just kind of bend can you see what I have here hold that loop take another pliers okay 
and then wrap it. So with hand thicker gauge. So these are head pins that I bought and I don't know what they are, watch gauge they are. Um, so anyways, there we have a wrap loop. And now it's time for to cut the excess wire. Hold it under your fingers so that it doesn't fly away around the room. And then tuck the tail in if there is one. There we go. See the wrap loop that I made? You can see all the details of the bead cap. I really like this. So that is one of the dangles. So the lariat has two sides. One side, this dangle I'm going to put. The other side, I'm going to put this dangle. For that also, we need the bigger one. So I'm going to just take this um, daisy spacer underneath. Um, just because I have added this here, right? So I take the daisy spacer underneath the uh, bead. If you don't like it, you don't have to add it. I'm just seeing if I like it this way or if I like it this way. I like it this way. I guess this is the way I like it. So that's okay. So now we have these spacers, right? Um, the ones that I want to use is this guy right here or this guy right here. Okay. Or what you can do is you can just take this guy in the opposite direction and have the speed on top. So this also you can do so whichever way you like it is the way you design it so I like it this way so what I'm going to go ahead and do it is bend this reposition bring it around like a question mark now make the question mark into a loop once you have the loop straighten it and you can hold the loop with your pliers. Okay. Take your other pliers and then wrap it around. There we go. So cut it. And take your pliers and just kind of tuck the tail in. So here is another dangle. Here is another dangle. These two are different. And we are going to make multiple dangles like this also. So let me tell you guys. In this, okay. some dangles I made it with a shorter head pin. Some I made it with a 2 inch head pin. If you are making with a 2 inch head pin, you have a lot of space to work with. So let me be clear. So this is a one and a half inch head pin. I put the, this is six millimeter, I guess, six millimeter bead and then uh, a daisy spacer and then bend it right here, reposition your pliers and bring it around. Okay. So the thing I'm using it is from Sam Speed Box, but you can use this design with a variety of beads whichever beads you have available you can make this just pull out a color combination that coordinates or that speaks to you i am sure that um normally we wouldn't think blue metallics with the purple um, and uh, browns and golds and bronze and copper but when you put together when you keep it on a on uh, platter kind of a thing then you know for sure that those beads work they go with each other and they look nice because as you can see these teardrops has very 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 many faceted um, effects to it right so the colors are extremely different so so this is what I'm talking about so you have a short tail to wrap basically so you need to be very careful while you wrap. So 
so that's all you have available so I just trim it off okay and then tuck the tail in let me show you guys one with the bigger uh, head pin right the bigger head pin so this I did with the shorter head pin and I have say four six and eight I can make two more tangles so which I will make it with bigger ones and then this one I need to make one more so so keep a small container which I keep all the time and collect all my small tit bits right here and then this is a two inch head pin you might think it is long and it's not needed for the small bead but let me tell you guys so bend the wire reposition it bring it around even though it's a thicker gauge you'll have plenty of space to work so when you hold this with your pliers take the next one and when you wrap it you will have a much controlled wrap because you have a long wire left right can you see how well I have wrapped this thing better than the shorter one that's the deal so that's what I'm talking about so it's totally up to you it's the comfort level so if you don't want to waste that I'm totally with you guys I hate wasting wires and head pins and stuff like that I always uh, try to utilize even if there is a small thing like this it will definitely not be useful so I dump it but if, if I have a longer piece I tend to save this so that is that we will do one of these two before that I need to finish one more of this so I just put a daisy spacer and I'm done with it if you want to put more spacer beads probably a bead cap and top of that a small bead you can do this versatile design this is so in fashion now it is going to be an organic looking necklace so um, and it is asymmetrical right asymmetrical is the fashion the trend right now and also so many knots knotted and mixed media kind of a stuff not like really really mixed media but you utilize a lot of techniques in one single necklace oops there we go and snip it off take your pliers and tuck the tail in there you go now um, I'm using two bead caps here I know it's a little bit of maybe it might be a little bit overkill for somebody but trust me I really like the look so I went for it um, very few times I use that I don't uh, quite normally uh, take two two beads for one but in this I really liked it so I'm kind of using that so let me show you guys what I'm talking about okay I take this 10 millimeter bead I put it on so I just have these bead caps this bead cap and it looks okay right right it looks okay but if I add this shorter bead cap on top it has that uh, kind of like a royal look <laughs> that's what I feel it, it just 
elevates the design much more so I just thought okay why not stack it I'm doing only six dangles of these so I'm just going to put my round nose pliers right there make a question mark kind of a thing once I have the loop I take my pliers hold it and then you can uh, do it with your fingers if you want to um, but I like to do it with the pliers because it becomes difficult for me to do with the hand with pliers it becomes easy for me so that's it you don't have to do a lot of wraps per se so snip it off right there tuck the tail in because I still want to see all those lines in that um, bead cap visible so here we have all our dangles ready it's all worth it trust me okay and then we will start our stringing process so first we need to prep the um, seal on this is regular seal on this is not micro or um, this is not fine or anything like that so how do you prep your seal on um, take a scrap paper if you have one let me just grab a scrap paper which I, okay there we go okay just a scrap paper and I keep it on top of here take uh, some glue like GS Hypo cement or any glue that a uh, super new glue super new glue will dry very fast and then take it and run through the edges of the seal on just like so coat it completely with it you really want to coat it nicely so that it becomes like a needle for you to string the beads on because it's a little bit wobbly and it frays in the start so do this and keep it on top of the paper and let it dry for some time then it becomes stiff it will be easy to work with to uh, string on beads to the uh, seal on okay so here I have made more tangles okay and uh, some more tangles for this side just for this side so one side it's going to be these the other side it's going to be these then we can continue and then uh, this is dry now so now what I do is I measure about say uh, two yards so I take about uh, two yards one two So, 3 feet is 36 inches, which is 1 yard. I will take 2 yards, but I will take um, just 1 yard for one side. The other yard will be for the other side. I already put glue on one side. The other side, I am thinking I will not put glue. I will be fine, I guess. Let's see. Okay. So, one end is sharp. Okay. Now, I actually... Um, measure 12 inches on the side which I didn't put glue okay and then fold it at that point of time so one side it is 24 inches the other side is only 12 inches so that's how I have the middle part okay first what I am going to do here is uh, take the shorter end and then put this teardrop bead inside the loop and then this is 12 inches that's 24 inches once it comes into the middle go ahead and make an overhand knot so you can use any color seal on you want you can also substitute the seal on with um, uh, silk Griffon silk that also you can use 
but I'm going to use Ceylon here and try and knot it as close to your loop as possible just an overhand knot okay once you have the knot proper you can tighten it by pulling both both the cords together so now I'll take the two ends okay add a couple of beads to it so I am going to divide how many I have here so that I have equal proportion on equal side there you go we have this many so I'm putting two on one side and two on the other And then I'm going to bring these two together and let it drop down. Okay. I wish there is a bead right here. Let me see if any bead of ours go through both the wires, which is quite a gill, but let's see whether it does, right? So I'll just put the end, which is, which I haven't put the glue on first, and then see if it accommodates two cords right here which it does perfect so let's just put a blue bead on top here okay I really like it and then I will add the dangles okay let's just move all these beads on the other side just a little bit space for us so now I have added these now I take the one cord and add um two drops on one side and two drops on the other okay and bring everything together just like so right see if you like it if you don't like it don't go ahead with it so I still am not satisfied with what I have here so what I'm going to do here is take this off and see how well I will I will make a knot overhand knot after the big 10 millimeter bead so I'm designing on the fly. I have in I have nothing in mind before. So I just have an idea and then I'm going with the idea. I make a knot. I pull the knot now and then see if it looks good. Just want it to look good. Let's see. kind of like it so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is make an overhand knot after adding the four dangles okay now you can actually use your tweezer nose pliers to help you with this or tweezers real tweezers 
you can do all of those and make sure you have your knot as close as possible and it is a very organic design so you don't have to be very accurate once you have it there pull these cords and then you also can pull it like that so there we go drops are here so now just don't want it to be very stiff okay and then I'm going to add more drops two on either side actually I can put three also three and drop everything down right here just like so then make an overhand knot check your fingers off and then move the knot as close to the angles as possible even if it is not close I'm fine I need a little bit of movement there see this there is a little bit of gap which I really want so that's good now I am adding a couple more beads three on one side and three on the other drop everything down and actually I will remove two one from each side so two on one side and two on the other so now I'll go ahead and tie a knot overhand knot So I made a knot again. There it is. Right? So now I'm going to add the rest of the dangles on either side. So you can add any number of um, dangles you want. You don't have to stop at where I stopped. I just started making and then I stopped where I thought that's good enough. So there we go. Okay. I tie an overhand knot again. then tighten it by pulling each strands apart and strengthening it so see here this is how it is this side now what I do is I have some of these bead caps from my stash so I'm going to put the bead cap in both the cords together just like so and then drop that down okay and then take your short cord take another bead 
in case if you don't want to use this bead you can use any other bead that you have available in this uh, we'll see if we can do this this is nice and big bead and then take another spacer and put the two cords inside put one and then put the other one That way it will be easier for you to thread it through, otherwise it might be a problem. So one cord is long and one cord is short. So that's something that you need to now go ahead and tie a knot, overhand knot. Um, make sure this knot is right next to the uh, bead gap as possible So I have that knot right there now I am going to do what is I am just going to trim this short cord off okay uh, so at this point of time you can add this cord or you don't have to add the cord it's totally up to you you can add more beads you want if you want that and all you can do but uh, you can also remove this card at this point of time so what I am going to do here is I'm gonna see if I can pass through this bead with the both cord just just thinking just one more bead both the cords are going in nicely so I shall put one more bead right there and tie a knot all we are doing is overhand knots we are not doing any other knots which is a little bit tougher or so right there we go so we have this so far and as I said what I'm going to go and do it here is tie another knot by just separating the cords okay just like so making the knot a little bit bulkier for me taking some GSI for cement you can take GSI for cement or any glue you have available and just put a generous dab on it and let it dry 
we are going to cover that with a bead cap um, uh, sorry a crimp cover you can also you could have used a bead tip if you want to but I shall use a bead uh, crimp cover here is a crimp cover that will fit on top of the thing if not I have a bigger crimp cover so I will let that dry it takes a while and then I will snip off this uh, short cord eventually I'll save this I will not throw it as you guys already know and I'll take this longer cord and start stringing beads to it so you can string any beads you want whichever you have available in the stash you can do so and uh, I am going to go ahead and take some of these beads and I'm thinking if I can put it through see that it's nice right I really like this and also even the seed beads goes through this um, I don't know if I want to add seed beads or not so let's just add, not add seed beads let's just have something else a spacer bead perhaps the copper spacer that we added and then some of this bead this humongous bead so and one more spacer and one more of this green bead maybe not the green this um, garnet it becomes thin if you like the look of it then go ahead for it right so that and then probably an overhand knot So then we can add the speed if you want it's totally up to you from here on um, I want to add this one right here it looks kind of pretty I want to add this but before that I want to add a blue so I will add this blue metallic bead first right here and then tie an overhand knot make sure the knot is right next to the bead just like how I'm knotting a Chinese knotting card I'm knotting this it's a little bit of a gap but that's okay for me that's because this knot was a little bit small and the hole in this is big so I'm just putting this bead right here nice and neat I like this then again a knot that's a hand knotting technique I have sh uh, shown this to you guys several times with Chinese knotting cord so here we go one more of this 10 millimeter bead okay So the lariat is supposed to be longer it can be as long as you want if you want to you know wrap it around your neck twice and uh, I mean once and then the second time it comes around and then um, hangs down basically 36 to 45 inches is what I would do for a lariat I can 
and repeat the topaz or the purple. And then also I need spacer beads and I was using the copper ones. These are from my stash. I love these spacers. Then I want to repeat it with this big bead then again a spacer and then probably the topaz color right You can also, you know, you can do is bring it around and then knot it around the bead or so. That also can be done. But I am okay with this. There we go. One more knot. Okay. Now I like the length of this. Right by this time, this is gonna be the glue is gonna set right there. So, I'm just going to cut it off not close to, I will cut it off very close to later. Um, once it's 24 hours, now I have a small thing, small um, gap here. I still have a small tape. So, let's just say this length is good enough. If you want to increase this length, you can increase this length more. Or if you are fine with this much length, then you can go ahead with this. So one thing I want to add is one more of this bead. I really like that bead a lot. So I will add one more of that. And make a knot. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is, uh, I have to, I have some leather cord available. This leather cord I got it from Michaels, I believe it has three colors and I'm using this blue, distressed blue color right here. I don't know if the camera is picking it up or not, it has that brown too. So I'm using that leather and I have cut here some length for myself this is um about say seven inches okay and then my leather cord is about 12 plus 12 almost 12 right 24 inches 24 plus 14 will be uh 34 38 inches so my lariat will eventually be 38 inches if adding the same seven inch length on the other side so for this what i'm thinking is i will add one more of this um, bigger blue bead um, just to give it some more length right yeah it kind of uh, blends very well I need one more spacer, bead gap, not spacer, I need bead gaps. So this is the cordon that I have. I know it's a silver color. 
and I'm also going to add a gold color there it will have all different colors but this is all I have right now so I'm utilizing whatever I have here so what I'm going to go ahead and do is make a knot over here knot after this bead and keep this aside we have to design the other side of the lariat too but before that I'll take this leather cord okay and then I'm going to go ahead and add it here to this cord end just like so it's a two millimeter leather that I'm having take your pliers and then this is the center part is the one which is crimping so see this leather is barely over there right over there where you can see and then go ahead and crimp it I like to go ahead with my pliers with my wire cutters actually that kind of cinches it down okay just like so now if you pull it will not come so this is where I have it so either you can add it directly here or you can put a, a jump ring and then add it there either way is fine for me so what I'm going to go ahead and do is add this here but also if I can add this to a jump ring then there might be an opportunity for me to actually change this if I want to the back of the of this uh, leather cord so we can change it if you want to so what I'm going to go ahead and do is do the other end as well put it these are called cord ends and put the leather inside and these cord ends are different sizes for different size of leather and this is a two millimeter cord end and as you can see inside the hole the leather barely comes out I don't want to pull it more so now I will go ahead and there is a center part in this um, in this um, finding so I'll go and give this so here I attach to this one and now I'm going to attach the leather ends to the side as you can see it's coming all the way in but I want it to stay where just about where that starts right here hopefully you can see that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a strong um, flat nose pliers or needle nose pliers uh, in my case i'm using the bent nose pliers and you can see the leather going in and out right so just want to hold it there okay and bring the leather down and just push it right there so for me what I I have tried doing is it's pretty hard I'm using the crimping pliers and seeing if I can crimp it that way yep that works oops this is what I did the last time and ruined the other one too let's go ahead and crimp it nicely yep I think this time I got it <laughs> okay there we go and if you want use your wire cutters and just create a dent right there there we go that's nice so nice and secure now I'm happy with how I secured the leather so now what I'm going to go ahead and do it is um, so if you want to keep this temporary you can keep it by uh, adding this to a jump ring so that you can remove this and add another one but I just want to keep it just like that I have here some wire guardians so I'm thinking to actually add the wire guardian um, to this 
thread right here see this there is a loop in the wire guardian and there is a channel in the top so the loop is on both sides so I come back like that and go like this okay and pull the cord through so this way it's a clean finish out here I wish I had a wire guardian in bronze that would match everything but I don't so I'm working with what I have here and then I'm taking this um, end and then I'm gonna again tie a knot again around the top of the bead okay so there we go just an overhand knot around the top of the bead to secure the wire guardian in place right go again one more time how much of a times you want so just go around that okay and take your cord go through the loop once and then twice and then when you pull it just be careful the knot doesn't slip off the uh, wire guardian don't worry about this messy knot we are going to cover that with a crimp cover so it doesn't show but we want the knot to be nearly nice and tight enough right that's about right so now again i will use my glue gsi Pussement. i have here beetle glue whichever glue you have available just put a dab of glue around the knot to secure it and then you're good to go let it dry for 24 hours as i said it's good to let it dry and then that way you will be sure that it's nice and secure let this dry and then you can cut it off cut the rest of the cord off let's measure how much i have left so that i can tell you guys exactly still i have some tail i let the tail be there until the uh, the, the glue is completely dry so here we go this um, I did it um, yesterday so I'm just going to snip it off right close to it okay and I will let this dry for, for 24 hours I'm measuring the leftover cord say about 11 inches I have left so in 36 inches if you minus 11 inches it will be 25 inches so take 25 inches or so okay just don't take 25 probably 26 inches just one inch give or take for this length so let me measure this length also for you and if you knot a lot or if you make uh, more knots or stuff like that so you have from the angle to the top part it's about seven inches to, to get a seven inch i had used um, 25 inches of cord and we have doubled it for this uh, dangles and on the top part it is only one single um, cord so keep that in mind and we also have our leather cord ready now all we need to do is the other side of the uh, pendant so let me just uh, let you guys know uh, where, how to do this crimp cover I'm thinking if this crimp cover is way too small should I go for a bigger crimp cover um, I have this size and a very big size I don't have anything in the middle I should invest on more crimp covers um, for my jewelry making so here we go hold it like that okay and I'm just going to check the knot it'll be tight why use this small one right so we'll use a bigger one 
I got the bigger crimp cover. Okay, we are going to cover the knot that we did here. So here we go. Just pop it there. See how easily it pops. All you need to do is take your pliers and close this guy up. Just making sure it is nice and it looks like a bead and it's nicely closed. There we go. So that looks like a bead. I use the copper one because I want the copper to be there since I used some copper seed beads also. I'm mixing the metals here and also we have some copper here. So I did that the same way when this glue dries I will snip off that short tail and then put another bead ca uh, crimp cover on top of that. So I will not waste the seal on I will save it for a project where I am using a short one. So again now I am going to take for the other side I am going to take 26 inches um, just to be on the safer side right 12 24 it's okay to take a little bit extra that's always good so you can actually put glue on both ends and make it as a needle uh, one end is good enough but if you want the other end to be stiff also um, as I said take a scrap paper that you have available and I'm sure everybody will have that so I will put it on top of this and then run my glue on it one side I'll leave it right there take the other side also and And then I'm closing the glue. I'm going to wash my hands, let it dry and come back when it's dry. So I'm going to do two diangles at a time. So I put a diangle on each side and then I'm going to tie a knot. So it's just a design preference. You can do whichever you like you it doesn't have to be only dangles you can just skip the dangle part altogether and just do beads it's totally up to you so here I am trying to bring the knot as close to the dangles as possible okay doesn't have to be exact but it's okay to have a little bit of a distance but not that much right so there we go so that's how your dangle looks okay then add two more make a knot overhand knot and then bring the knot as close to the tangle as possible 
and do the same with the rest the last two dangles as I said you can do all six dangles together or do it this way or do it two and one separately however you prefer I like this pattern so I'm doing it this way again an overhand knot so we are doing very simple knots but we are combining um, a lot of elements in this necklace together that's what makes this necklace so special right there we go we have all our dangles ready uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to separate this and tighten that knot as much as possible and then I'm going to separate these two cords and I'm going to add this golden beads so these are hematite uh, golden beads that's what uh, Sam said um, it has that brushed effect too as you can see I'm gonna go randomly with the beads um, I'm not following a particular pattern because these beads are irregular in size and uh, shape so I have three this side let me do a three this side as well okay see how it looks continue putting those uh, gold beads one I can even put this shape two three four five and six so totally nine this side and we'll do the same the other side as well two three four five and six so we already put three so nine on that side and nine on this side let's just confirm it and put everything down here and again this is going to be a little bit heavy because these are hematite beads and these are big beads as well okay so I am maybe I'll take two more off of this groupings because I don't want it to weigh down a lot so seven beads on either side and then I'm going to go ahead and do an overhand knot and guide the knot towards our groupings right here um, see I haven't tightened the knot yet because I don't like it not being very close
let's do the hand knotting technique so that there we go we got it close and that's what I really like and then um, it is just a pattern so let's see our pattern here so this is how it is so the color the copper color and the gold color is here we have all colors in this necklace silver copper gold bronze <laughs> right so after this you can continue with the blue or the copper because we have the copper here i want to not use the copper again rather i would use this bead right here so what i will do is i will string this bead on one of the teardrop and then bring it like this see i'm not stringing both the cords together i am stringing on only one cord and i'm getting the other cord on top of this and then i'm going to do an overhand knot with both the cords it gives an organic look uh, so there we go and then pull it i like this way so that i i got this teardrop right here and then we can have whichever bead you want so tighten that knot up and then after this we can add some of these small beads um let's do a lighter color now the amethyst probably so now we can actually continue with this boho look if you want so just put it in one of the cord let me see if the other cord goes through if not we can go for the boho look as well so let's see if the thinner cord I mean which I highly doubt yep it doesn't go so let me just put a round bead here and see how well it goes this will fit two cords together inside so you can hold this and take the other cord and feed it through there we go so that's that and then tie an overhand knot see I almost ran out of the short cord um, okay so I like that look and then what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, we can actually finish the bigger cord here we don't have to have the bigger cord if you don't want to um, it's totally up to you I want to add this bead right here once more just to tie everything together um, but I don't know if I have to bring these two beads in here will that look this looks even more brighter I believe so I'm gonna put this bead in here let me see if both the cords go through or else I will do an organic look doesn't matter so in this like this type of a necklace the design is totally in your hands you don't have to uh, follow any strict pattern you can no it wouldn't so that's okay I can have a bogo look there we go just like that
so I am taking a lot of uh, two strands here just because of the fact that we have that heavy hematite bead here and this is not as heavy as this one so that's why I wanted more security than that um, now again a blue bead maybe again this uh, hole I don't know if it will accommodate to let's try it does that's nice I like the look of that uh, now it's time for me to do a knot tighten this knot up and do one more knot so the long cord I put it aside take the short cord okay and go around this long cord just like this okay and tie a knot go through once and go through twice and tighten that knot okay we are going to put a bead gap here so it doesn't matter I'll do one more overhand knot just like that oops That's more than enough knots, I think. If you want, you can pull it with your pliers as well. Okay. Now time to add our GSI persimmons or any glue you have available. A generous amount here. There we go and let that dry for at least 24 hours to be safe i will just cut this off a little bit leaving a short tail see we haven't wasted pretty much anything and also take a zip lock or so and put it over there not straight on my mat i have this here now it's time for me to add this bead right here and a spacer as i said i really like the daisy spacer a lot okay um let me do this green color the pop of color is nice we haven't used green in any other form so just one color over there um i don't know how it will look so let's just not go for the green then i still have more colors available in the sample that i made here let me just pull that off the red is what i really like i mean i like the green also but i have used only blue and red there so here two beads and then a knot so you don't have to follow the same pattern as you followed in the other side right this necklace is asymmetrical and if you want to follow the same pattern and be it symmetrical go ahead and do it it's your design you can do however you like then after this i would like to add one more of the blue bead this guy right here just the blue bead and then tie a knot again
push the knot towards the bead that way also you can get it tight and after this let me see how long it is yeah we still have a little bit uh, little bit more length to go doesn't have to be actually the same length it can be of a different length too so and um, after this i will add probably a topaz right why not topaz and i have a blue Tie an overhand knot again. Make sure the knot comes towards the bead like there. You can push the knot towards the bead just like so. Then one more of this bead. Right. And then what else we didn't add is what we need to think. But I don't want the same to be here. So I shall put a knot after this as well. So when you go like that, you just push the knot towards that bead, right? See, there is a small gap. What I can do is I can go ahead and put one more knot on top of the existing knot. Just be careful. Sometimes it doesn't go on top of it. And then the whole point is gone. There it went. Nice and big knot. I really like that knot. And after that, I will end up with this bead right here because I really like this bead a lot. Um, I'm kidding. I just want to go through all the beads that we have in the other side and not follow a symmetrical pattern, but to be a little bit different. And I also want this to be narrow enough to put my um, uh, wire guardian in. So I like the length of it. Now I'm ready to add the wire guardian. As I said, you can add a wire guardian which is the same color. Since uh, I don't have a bronze color nor a copper color for that matter. I have only gold and silver in my stash which is very sad. I need to get more of these and there we go sometimes these small items are the ones that we we normally forget when we are placing an order so some reason i forgot this so i am putting the cord in the wire guardian and then coming back okay there's a channel and then you come back through the other loop. All this I did without a needle if you guys notice. But going through this is a little bit tough. My glue has worn out right. Really. Thank goodness it went through. Okay. Now you should pull all of this together close to the bead then make a knot. So when you make a knot you just go around and then loop it. Go through that loop once. Now there is not even a knot. Let's just do this again. Okay. Go through that once just like so and then 
and tie the knot for some reason. When you tighten the knot, make sure that you don't go on top of any bead and it stays out of the bead, just like so. Okay, and go ahead and do one more time. This time go through the knot twice to make a surgeon's knot. Surgeon's knot is nothing but you go through the loop that you make twice. That's it. So that's, that's a surgeon's knot. Hold the wire garden in your hand and just pull that knot tight when you have pulled that knot tight yeah i can do one more because i have a big rather big uh, uh, crimp cover so i can bulk this knot a little bit more this is also a surgeon's knot by the way so that I can get this knot really, really tight. And then again, you place it on a ziplock or something, put generous amount of glue. Generous by the, by what I mean is, just have to cover all the areas, the front and the back and everything. And it has a sharp tip so it doesn't take a lot so here we have only a little bit left which I really like it because if I want to add more beads or more knots then I won't be deprived of any thread so it's good like 26 inches is the best to work with and let this dry and after that there is nothing more to do take a jump ring and add this cord ends to the wire guardians that we did we'll go ahead and do that too we need to let this glue dry a bit so i'm just going to cut this off right here and leave a short tail i'll cut that after the glue is dried completely for 24 hours over here and over here and now we shall add this to I have here some four jump rings in a bronze color and I just want to add the jump ring to this leather cord end and to this wire guardian. I want to add two jump rings because it's safe to be, it's good to be safe, right? because the entire necklace um, has a little bit of weight and lariat means it is long and then there's high chance that you can play with the necklace a lot so want it to be stronger connection between these that's about right okay that side and about this side and wiggle wiggle the jump ring and close use um, two pliers it's easy to use the two pliers when we are opening and closing a jump ring there is also a ring tool to open and close a jump ring but for some reason i feel that this is my handy tool to open and close a jump ring if you have um, if you like the other tool that i am talking about i hope you guys understand see this a jump ring is not closed yet so just press it it's actually distorted even let's just try with the two pliers 
and get it closed press it there we go that's better so if you like this way or you like that ring kind of a tool that to open and close a jump ring so that tool leave me in the comments below which is your favorite jumper jump ring opening and closing tool do you like two pliers or the ring tool so essentially our necklace is almost done we need to we are waiting for the glue to dry here and here and then I have a couple of um, crimp covers to put on we are having four crimp covers to put on here is one and I'm gonna slip that crimp cover on top right here I find it easy when I put the crimp cover like this and then use my pliers to actually kind of close it there we go that looks neat and take another crimp cover I'm gonna let this dry completely and put it here and here two places and then I will come and show you guys the necklace finished necklace so as far as now it's actually done but we are waiting to put the two crimp covers and then our lariat necklace is pretty much done I'll come back when the glue is dry hi friends I finished adding the uh, crimp covers as you can see and I'm done this is how the necklace looks like and it's a tassel lariat actually the, it's not a tassel it's a lariat and we have some tangles right here i hope you guys like this video if you do give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel don't forget to hit the bell icon for notification i do upload videos um uh, at least four times a week and then once a week there is a live thanks so much for watching have a good day bye